This video is an introduction to our Cascada PID control. Cascada is the name we've given to our homemade uh, RTU system based on a Raspberry Pi running the Linux operating system. We've got the Raspberry Pi connected to a LabJack data acquisition unit that lets us get analog data in and output analog information. In this case, we're using it to control an actual process using the standard PID algorithm. So what we see here is the control screen for it. We have logged into the Raspberry Pi remotely using a client called Bitvice, which is a secure shell SSH client that lets us uh, pick the IP address of the Raspberry Pi, log in with the username and password, and then once the connection is established, it gives us a terminal window, like you'd see if you were sitting at the console of the Raspberry Pi directly. So we're looking at this screen here, the PID control, and I wanted to show you some of the basic features of this in case you wanted to use this in our lab. Uh, this is all open source software. The source code is going to be released to my website pretty soon, uh, the Socratic Instrumentation website. So if you want to download this and play with it on your own, you're welcome to. So navigating around the, uh, the controls here, uh, as you see, it's a, a display with a trend graph. P means process variable, O means output, and S means set point. Right now, our temperature control process is right on set point, which is why you don't see a line of S's because they're underneath the lines of P's. We're right on set point. You also see the process variable, set point, and output displayed up here. Right now, set point is 75%, and PV is, is right there. Over here, you see another set of parameters. These are the PID tuning constants, the tuning coefficients, the direction of action, whether it's direct or reverse, the type of algorithm, whether it's ideal or parallel, and our trend interval which basically tells me how many scans of the program is run for every tick on the trend. Right now, the Raspberry Pi is executing at 35 loops per second, or 35 scans per second. And that equates to a trend update rate here of three seconds per tick. So every tick on the trend here is three seconds long. <coughs> we also have a few controls down here, automatic and manual, increment and decrement buttons, a select control, the ability to quit, and to capture trend data. So I'm going to illustrate how all this works. First, you'll notice up here in the green background, the yellow background, there are two lines that are appear, appearing in white text rather than black. Those are the parameters that are being selected. If I press the S button or the F11 button, either one does it, I will toggle which parameter I'm selecting. I'm just going to continue to do this and let you see what happens. When I'm at the top parameter here in automatic mode, I'm able to adjust my set point. If I go down here, I'm able to adjust my proportional band. If I go there, I'm able to adjust my integral constant, my derivative, direction of action, the type of algorithm, and the scan interval, the trend interval there. Now to bump any of those parameters up and down, the numerical parameters, I don't have a keypad entry for numbers, but what I do have is the ability to increment or decrement by tenths, units, or tens. And this can be done through function keys, F4 through F9. And basically, the way this is laid out, F6 and F7 right here are incrementing and decrementing by small amounts. So if I go up and down like that, you can see the, uh, the gain value. You go at 3, 3.1, 3, 3.9, 3, up and down by 0.1. If I spread out by one key, F5 and F8, I go up and down by 1. So we went from 3 to 4, now back to 2 up and down. If I go F4 and F9, that'll change that parameter by 10. If I hit F9, that'll change my gain to 13. And if I hit F4, it brings it back down to 3. So that's how those increment and decrement bu buttons work. Alternatively, you can use the arrow keys and page up, page down. So if you're more familiar with page navigation on a document, uh, left and right goes up and down by tenths. Up and down goes increments and decrements by ones, or by units, and page up, page down, increments and decrements by tens. So it's pretty simple to change the value there. It's a nice alternative to actually typing in a number, and just going up and down. And I select which parameter I'm going to increment or decrement with the S button, or the F11 button. If I want to adjust my integral the same way, I can adjust it up and down, same keys. You get the idea. <coughs> now certain parameters, like the direction of action or the type of algorithm, the program locks me out of changing it while I'm in automatic mode, which is a sensible thing to do. You don't want to change the action of your controller or the type of algorithm when you're running. You want to make sure you're in manual mode first. So I could switch right now to manual if I wanted by hitting the M button or F1. 
That puts me in manual mode. If I select direct action, now I can go down here and use my arrow keys and go reverse or direct. Or I could also go to either ideal or parallel algorithms, only in manual mode. If I want to switch to auto mode using the A button, puts me back in auto. I know the, now those parameters are locked out again. So let's say I want to control my process here. Uh, right now I'm controlling at 75% nice and steady. I'm going to move my select until I'm right back there, adjusting set point. And now I'm going to take my set point and move it down to 70. So I just decremented the set point down to 70%. You see now the S appearing here. That set point trend has now gone down. The output jumped up as I'm actually controlling the speed of a cooling fan, blowing cooling air over a hot object. And the P, my process variable, has stepped down as I begin to approach the new set point. And pretty quickly, we've settled into the new set point values. So while we're waiting for this thing to settle out, I can talk about uh, some of the other features of it. Um, like I said, the PID execution rate, it's measured by how fast the Raspberry Pi is able to execute the algorithm. That's a live updated value. Same with my trend update rate of three seconds per tick. The way I change this, if I want my trend graph to go faster or slower, all I have to do is use my S button to select down to trend interval. And if I change the trend interval here by going up and down, say fewer scans per tick, what that means is that there's uh, um, fewer seconds per tick. When I, the ticks go by faster than they did before. So I could actually speed up my trend here if I want to. I'll do it so you can visibly. If there's a very fast trend, I just move my trend interval down to one scan per second. So it's basically 34 ticks on the trend for every second. So it's blazing by, which is appropriate for a very fast process. Not so appropriate for this one. If I go back up to where we were before, we're about 104 or so. You can see right there how easy it is to increment and decrement your numbers. If I want to go up and down by tens, I use page up and page down. If I want to go up and down by ones, I use up and down arrows, and so on. And so now I'm back at about three seconds per tick, <coughs> so my trend's going by a lot slower. I'm going to make another set point change here. <coughs> Excuse me. So I need to move my selection back to auto to adjust the set point. Uh, and I'm going to um, bump that up to 80%. Now I'm asking for my process variable to be hotter. It's a temperature process, so I'm asking for a higher temperature. And you can see the set point just jumped up. Process variable is coming up to meet it. And the output has gone down, slowing down my cooling fan to allow the heat to build up. So another feature I'm going to show you here, which is kind of cool, is capturing trend data. Now we have a trend right here, which works. And it's functional, but it, as you can see, it's rather crude. For example, you watch the output line here, and this output line jump down. It may not be clear at first inspection. It's actually part of the same graph. It just moved one tick over and several ticks down to plot that letter O for the output line. It's not as clean and easy to see as a line that's actually drawn there. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, this is a little bit easier to see as the output builds up. You can see that's more of a trend coming up. But big jumps like that can be difficult to interpret. So I wanted to give uh, users of this program a way to look at the data in a format that was cleaner. And perhaps would give them more power and flexibility in what they did with that data. And so we have a feature here called Capture Trend Data. Like all the other features here, all the other commands, I've got a couple different ways of accessing it. I can hit the F12 function key, or just hit the letter C, and that will capture the trend data. And when it captures, it takes everything you see on the trend and spits it out to a text file, that's a comma separated value file, CSV file, which any spreadsheet can then access. So I'm going to wait till this settles out I'm pretty close to set point here. I'm going to hit the C button. That's going to capture my trend data. And now what I'm going to do is navigate down to another feature of Bitvice, which is an SFTP file transfer protocol that allows me to access files stored in the Pi. And here I've got a file called trendcapture.csv. That file just got written to when I hit the letter C. <coughs> so I'm going to double click this. Double click this. And because it's a CSV file, Windows already knows, oh, this is, this is a, um, a spreadsheet file. So I'm going to just highlight those columns and insert a scatter plot. <coughs> and presto, I've got a trend. So there's my trend. This is the noisy information I had when we had the, the trend flying by at a fast rate. 
Here's where I slowed it down to about three ticks per second. <coughs> Sorry, three seconds per tick. You see my output went down when I raised my set point up. My process variable is coming up to meet the set point. We overshot a little bit, and now it's correcting. So this data, unfortunately, <coughs> is not live. It's a static view captured when I hit the letter C. However, given that it's now in spreadsheet form, I have a lot of flexibility in what I do with that data. I can come over here and do any statistical analysis that I might want to do, plug in formulas to Excel, analyze the data, whatever. I have the full power of Excel at my fingertips at this point, looking at the trend data that I captured when I hit the, the letter C. If I go back to our terminal here, <coughs> and as the trend continues on, I could refresh that. I could just uh, close out Excel first. If I want to, I can come back here and wait for the trend to go on a little bit further and hit the letter C again. That just rewrites to the same comma separated value file. If I double click on that again, I've got fresh data that I can now replot and view and analyze in Excel. So if you're doing tuning on a process and you want to capture that data and analyze it later on, this is a nice convenient format, puts it right in a, in a spreadsheet for you and you're not having to deal with this program that only runs on the Raspberry Pi. You've now brought that data into any other computer you want to use, Mac, uh, Windows, or another Linux computer. Anything's fair game, because it's a standard comma separated value file. So that's the basic layout of this program, how it works and what it does. This is version 2.1. I will be making some more modifications to it here in the near future, but the basic functionality will remain the same. All the keys that you've seen to access the features, the way the trend graph works. Uh, I may add a couple extra features here and there, but basically what you see is what we're going to be using in the lab pretty soon.